Hello, welcome to today's episode of Easy SAP Yabop. We're going to be discussing BAPIs. BAPI stands for Business Application Programming Interface. And what that is, is essentially a standard provided by SAP interface that allows us to either exchange data between different systems, um, RFC calls, or to just have methods housed in function modules within an SAP system that we can use. So BAPIs are typically going to be used for, you know, connecting to third party systems, you know, remote function calls, connecting to legacy type systems where we're bringing data into SAP during an implementation. Um, you know, speaking to other programming languages such as Java, C Sharp, Visible, Visual Basic, uh, .NET, that type of thing. And also for just connecting SAP systems to other networks or the internet so that we're able to talk to you know foreign systems. So a BAPI essentially is going to be, for the most part, a function module that is RFC or remote capable. So we're able to use these function modules either within an SAP system, within the same SAP system even, or within another SAP system, or from a completely foreign programming language such as, you know, like I said, Java, C Sharp, all those other ones. So in order to begin developing with BAPIs, what we first want to do is actually take a look at a transaction that is built into SAP that allows us to see BAPIs, and that is transaction easy enough, BAPI. So we're going to go ahead and run this. And we can see over here on the left, and you're, you guys are going to look a little different on your system if it's a actual productive type system. This is a SAP trial system. So we're not going to have everything that we would have in a true SAP system. So this is going to be very limited here. Um, you won't see it's like financial accounting, sales and distribution, materials management, plant management, plant management, all that stuff. It's not going to exist here. This is going to show us kind of limited, you know, what they provide as an example in this trial system. So we can drill down, you know, basis is installed for this trial system. We'll say basis components actually move I think I can move this no I guess I can so we can hover and see the full text here but we can look under basis components let's just say security we see user go ahead and drill down again and in here we'll see our different we can click through it our actual method account groups assign change user display user and these are going to be you know remote function modules so if we look here this method is just going to be called display for the user business object we get some short text here that just tells us what it does and we have a function module BAPI user display so if we double click on BAPI user display it will actually take us to the function builder transaction SE 37 where we can learn about this function so if we go to attributes any text here would mention what this method does. We see it is a remote enabled module. So say for example, we have another system that manages users in a company. And when a user is terminated, we want to disable their you know, access to SAP when something happens in another system. So we can come down here under user, under security, under basis, and we can see lock, lock user so we could choose the appropriate BAPI that would allow us to lock this user so we go to attributes again it tells us what this method does it is remote enabled so from another system we could call this method this uh, function module that would lock the actual user so there's many interesting things here that you can do we'll go back to display for now Oh, already got it pulled up. I'll double click on the function module really quick. Actually, I'll show you one thing before I do this. You know, you've got right here, it displays what the method is, the description, the function module. Your other tabs are going to be documentation. So we can click on the documentation tab on the tab strip. You're going to see here, dialog method that displays the address data of the user in a dialog box. So this is going to be really interesting here. We'll click on tools. 
we see our different tool selection, business object builder, function builder, can double click on this, it'll show us the function module. We can choose display, create BAPI list. If I click on that, it'll show us this method here. I click on project. I don't think I much use project here. So we can we can see this. We have some some programming guidelines, some BAPI design. And we're just basically, you know, implementing a BAPI so we can see how that works. And this is some stuff you can read over here on your free time. But we'll go to this BAPI user display to get to the function module. We'll see it imports username, so it takes in the username and returns this structure BAPI ret2. Go ahead and copy that, unless I can find it in here. Let's just search on it. So nothing in there. We'll just go to our data dictionary, transaction SE11. And we will search on this structure, click display. So we see this structure. This is how the data is going to be returned to us from the BAPI function module. We get type, message class, message text, and message variables, parameters, such and such. Just kind of a generic return parameter for BAPIs. This is what this is. So we'll go ahead and exit out of here. We'll test this function module, BAPI user display. And we're going to input a username. So I'll just input my developer username. And we'll click right here and do execute. This will execute the function module and it will return any of the return parameters here. Um, anything that the function module exports, any of the tables that it changes, that sort of thing. So we'll just give it a second for that to run. So now the function module has run and we do see the dialog that the BAPI in the description said it would, it would show a dialog with the user address information. So if we look here, we see all the user address information for user developer. Go ahead and just exit out of that. And we see return value. It's going to be value 000. So function module has executed successfully. Let's go in here and test it again and just provide a username that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. F8 to run it. We get a return value here user doesn't exist does not exist so that's simple enough so again this BAPI Explorer here is going to be useful you can search with a you know hierarch hierarchical view <laughs> or you can search alphabetically so if you're looking for something particular you know say maybe flight and come down here and look at flight I can see get detail there's a method get detail double click on it it'll show us interfaces key fields attributes methods or events if there were any of them so this is how the BAPI is physically structured we see a function module here BAPI flight get detail we double click on that function module it takes us to this function module go to attributes and look at you know what's going on here we could test it I would actually give it an airline ID a flight date and it would return extension in, extension out, and in this return table. So these are function modules that we can call from, again, they're remote enabled modules. We can call it from different systems, different programming languages, and we're able to find data in SAP. This is very, very useful during integration, you know, implementation, I mean, or if we're trying to have a system that interfaces with SAP and we're able to directly talk to SAP as opposed to relying on some sort of you know, text, comma separated value, CSV file, or an interface file, something like that. So in this case, we can directly talk to the system. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it's real time. So that's a better alternative than interfacing to another system with text files or something of that nature. Um, as a, you know, we also have, you know, these methods for just getting data. We do have as well methods in here cancel like under flight booking we can cancel flight booking confirm a flight booking create a flight booking from data so this create from data you'll see this a lot this is also used for like you know create from data will be used in function modules 
in BAPI is that, for example, you can create sales orders, purchase orders, requisitions, that type of thing. So you'll see that create from data a lot. And what that generally means is you're going to call this BAPI and you're going to give it, you know, this structure is an importing parameter and it's going to be all the data necessary so that SAP can, from that data that you're passing, create this this particular entity in the database. So that is how we're going to do this. Um, like I said, guys, this is kind of restricted here because I'm just in a trial system, but you can you know look around alphabetical or hierarchical view and you can figure out pretty much what you need. So see sales order from OP. I don't know what this is. Create sales order by opportunity. So there's things in here. I mean, there, even from you know just a general user standpoint, basis type functions, all the way down to you know something particular in a functional module of SAP. So for example, we could have a BAPI in here that would allow us to create a material for a MM functional area. We could have a BAPI that would allow us to maybe create an employee for the HR function, you know, functional area. So that's essentially how you're going to find BAPIs, how you're going to see what methods that you can actually use as it relates to that part of the data model and, you know, look at it, see if it works for you. And if not, you know, sometimes there's not a BAPI for everything. I mean, maybe we want to get some flight details and this get detail here doesn't necessarily return in these, you know, tables all of the data that we need so we would typically have to at that point write our you know our own queries query the database and do something like that but the the benefit of a BAPI is it kind of provides this level of abstraction so we don't have to necessarily know the database structure the schema the design all of that we can just call a method get flight detail and it returns flight detail based on some importing parameters so, you know, otherwise we'd have to know what tables to query, put all this data together in a structure and return it to the user. And that just gets messy, especially if we're going to, you know, interface with an external system as a remote enabled function module. You know, somebody that's working in C Sharp or Java calling, you know, SAP function modules and may not necessarily be familiar with SAP and how the data structures are in the data dictionary. So, they just want some basic data. They don't want to know, you know, have to know, I need to select this from this table, join on this table. You know, for all entries in this table, I need to go ahead and figure out this data. That's that's not something we want developers who don't work with SAP to have to do. So BAPIs are great for that. It's a, it's essentially an API for, you know, things other than SAP systems, but it's also very useful, like I said, calling these functions from one SAP system to another SAP system. And then of course, these are also useful for developers working in one system to not have to select all this data themselves. So I might not want to use this function module from another programming language or from another SAP system, but it's often quite easy for me to use this BAPI flight get detail in my own report program so that I'm not trying to go all over the place and select this data and do all these complicated things. So that about wraps it up for BAPIs, guys. I'm sure I left some stuff out. <laughs> if you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this video, give me a like. If you really liked it, give me a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.